How's it going? I'm Andrew from the Glazer Tutoring Company, and today I would like to teach you how to use the remainder theorem to find the remainder of some polynomial division. So let's keep in mind what the remainder theorem is. It says that if you have some function, call it f of x, and it's being divided by some linear function, call it x minus k. Now it doesn't really matter what this is, you can call it k, a, you know, j, no way. Well, that's what happens when you read a lot of bedtime stories to your children. You just start rhyming randomly. Anyway, um, what this remainder theorem says is that if you have this setup where you have some function f of x, which this whole thing could be considered f of x, it's being divided by some linear function, which this thing can be considered a linear function because the power of x is 1, then the remainder will be equal to, the remainder of this division will be equal to f of k. Now, it's a little tricky to kind of understand, I think, how this relates then to the divisor here, x plus 1. The idea is this, that somehow I have to turn this into x minus k, where k is some constant number. The only way to do that is to notice how the x's line up nicely. That's fine. But the signs are opposite. Now, you have to follow this model. And what that means, you got to write a negative. But the 1, then, could be considered a negative 1. And the reason for that is because if you subtract a negative 1, that's like saying the same thing as adding a positive 1, right? And what this does is this now sets it up in the x minus k form. So your k value here is negative 1. Now, that's all fine and dandy. I just don't like that method, though. I think the easier method is to take whatever your divisor is, assuming it's a linear function. Now, the interesting thing is that you can have a coefficient here. Okay, It'll work out. So if you have like 2x plus 1, it'll still work. But if you have 2x plus 1, it doesn't really fit this model nicely. Uh, in any case, what you're going to do, take the divisor, and you're going to set it equal to 0. And all you're going to do is solve this for x. And when you solve this for x, you wind up finding then the k value. Notice how they're the same. Okay, this is k. So what this is now talking about is that in order to find the remainder of this division, we can take the k value that we found and plug it in for every single x of the function. That's what this means. It says take the function and plug in your value of k everywhere you see an x. So all you now have to do is basically take negative 1 and plug it in everywhere you see x. Raised to the 4th, plus then 5. This is minus 1, raised to the 3rd, right? Minus 4 times negative 1, minus then 17. And now evaluate this. In other words, solve it. Find the value, right? Anytime you raise a value to an even power, the sign of the result is always going to be positive. So then 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, right, is just simply 1. Now, that's then going to be plus. Anytime you have then an odd power, whatever sign is inside of your parentheses will remain. So a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 is simply a negative 1. So this is really 5 times negative 1. Then this is going to be, you know, negative 4, I guess you can consider, times negative 1. That should become a positive 4. And then minus a 17. You can clean this one up a little bit, right? Positive 5 times negative 1 is going to be a negative 5, so you can simply subtract that. All right. Now let's see what we got. So when we combine these two, right, that's simply a negative 4 plus 4 minus 17. Then when I combine these two, that's 0 minus 17, and this should just be equal to negative 17. I don't know how that turned into 71, but uh, yeah. That's my brain. So what we realize here is that this now is the remainder. So if you were to do the division of this polynomial function divided by this polynomial function, you would find that the remainder is negative 17. Now, another way to do it, and this is a faster way. Remember, I'm teaching it, so it takes a little bit of time, but you could not literally knock this out in probably 30 seconds. Um, another way to do it is to use uh, synthetic division. Now, that's a longer process, um, but it would, it might not be a bad idea to kind of know a couple of ways, just in case on the test, right? Let's say you forgot, you're like, oh man, what's the remainder theorem? I don't remember, but I do remember synthetic division. You can still answer the question, right? You always want to know multiple routes to your destination, 
That way, in case there's a roadblock, one way, you can still get there. Um, so let's set up the synthetic division for this problem. Take a look. Bam. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our synthetic division. We need five columns here. All right. Uh, basically, you can look at the highest power of X, add one to it, and that'll tell you how many columns you need. So this is going to be the column for the coefficient of the X to the fourth power. This is X to the third. This is X squared. This is going to be X, and that's your constant term. So you're going to look at this. Basically, this is the numerator, right? This is known as the dividend. And you're going to look, and you're going to identify then the coefficient of the X to the fourth term. You're going to plug it in. Coefficient of the X cubed term, plug it in. Coefficient of the X squared term, you don't see an X squared, no big deal. You plug in a zero. You don't skip it. you got to plug in a zero. The coefficient of the X term is a negative 4, and the constant is going to be negative 17. Great. Now, what you got to do is find this term on the outside of your synthetic division table. Take your divisor, and all you're going to do is set it equal to 0, solve that for X, and oh my goodness, isn't this very similar to what we did before? Yes. So plug in your negative 1. Now, follow the division algorithm, which is just a very intelligent way to say series of steps. So now take the denom denominator. No, that's not a denominator. Just take the value at the bottom. All right. That's not complicated. Take the value at the bottom. Multiply it by the outside value. So that's going to be a negative 1. You plug it into the next adjacent cell here. You add these terms on up, and that should become now a 4. Then take 4. Multiply it by negative 1. That should be a negative 4. Plug it into the next adjacent cell, add that up, negative 4. Then you're going to take, even though that looks like 7, negative 4. Then you're going to take the negative 4, multiply it by the negative 1, which comes out to be a positive 4. Plug that into the next adjacent cell, add this on together, and that's going to be a 0. Take 0, multiply it by a negative 1, that's going to be a 0. Add this on up, and it's a negative 17. And this value here represents your remainder, which is what we said it was over there. So guys... Thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helps. As you can see, it's a little bit faster to use that remainder theorem, but there's multiple ways to solve problems. So thank you so very much for your support. And if we helped you out here at all, maybe recommend our channel to your classmates. We'd love to help more people. And we don't only have math. We have physics, chemistry as well. We have thousands, literally thousands of videos out there. Solve solutions for specific problems because that's what you're going to see on your test. The best way to do well on the test is to prepare like you're taking a test and do real problems. So check out some of the OpenStax books. You can download them for free at OpenStax.com or .org. I don't really know, but one of the two. And use our videos in case you're not sure of how to answer it. Thank you so very much. We'll see you soon. Bye.